This isn't a game. People struggle with this every day. As a veteran, as an artist, I cannot stress how important an outlet is. 22 vets commit, commit suicide each day. Let that sink in. Mental health has been treated like a joke, and it's up to us to self-heal. My name is Christopher Gilberry, and this is why I draw. I actually first started using art as an outlet for, for therapeutic use. Um, probably about two years ago, I started painting for the first time, acrylic, and it, it really calmed me down a lot. It, it focused me. I felt like I could lose myself in my painting for hours and hours. I think when I was younger, maybe I had a little bit of problems because I grew up in such a violent area and like went through a lot of violence, but um, I don't think the men like really got to me until I, like after, the, after my first Iraq deployment. I didn't notice it until now when I'm 32 years old. What led me to the Marine Corps, honestly, I, I was about to get out of high school and I really didn't know what I was going to do with my life. And then I looked up on the Army's website and was thinking about doing welding because I thought, okay, maybe that's a good job, you know. And a recruiter called me the next day for the Marines. I didn't even know what a Marine was, to be honest. And he was like, you, I could give you free college, and I just took it. When I first heard I was going to Iraq, I was actually really excited. I mean, you're 19 years old, you know, and you don't really realize like what you're about to do. You just want to do because you want to do with your friends. You want to prove to the guys who are older than you that you can hang with them and be part of the family. Iraq affected a lot of us really hard. I mean, I've seen a lot of things that I wouldn't want anyone else to see, and I got to live with them every day. I lost a lot of good friends. All right. I think about them all the time. Fortunately, the only thing that helped me it wasn't drawing, it was just smoking cigarettes and smoke a lot. I smoked like two packs a day. Now I'm two years without cigarettes. While I was enlisted, I, I drew about the last year because I got my apprenticeship through uh, another tattoo shop here on island. And then I had to like trace designs and then that kind of sparked the drawing more. I feel that the Marine Corps has directed my, has affected my mental health in a great deal. I was a young kid, a, a mind ready to mold, and they molded it into a, into unfortunately a killer. And I'm not, a, I'm not a person. I never was a person of violence. I never would hurt nobody unless they tried to hurt me. I'm still that way today. It's like, even though I was trained that way, I was still wouldn't hurt a human being. So PTSD is, a, is something that I, when I was younger, I was it was kind of like a bad tab, taboo, where if you were diagnosed with PTSD, you were, they call you names, they you were weak, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, in, in the movies, they make it sound like you're just some, some crazy person who's angry all the time or gonna snap into a combat situation, but it's really not like that. It's, it's. It's imagine if you're constantly about to, let's say you go to the bar and you meet somebody and that guy's threatening your life, that's what it feels like all the time. It feels like you're, you're being threatened, so the first, you got three stages of being threatened with either fight, flight, or frozen, and those things just happen to you constantly, almost on a daily basis, and then you have the night terrors, you can't sleep at night, you get insomnia, um, that I have anger, but I've never portrayed that anger on anybody else. I would say my PTSD started when I got back from Iraq. So when I got out of the Marine Corps, you know, not knowing that symptoms and not knowing what's wrong with you and constantly having to go to doctors and try to figure out what's wrong with you was a hardship. You know, I knew I wasn't a happy person. And being out of the Marine Corps and transitioning out of that, that indoctrined lifestyle, it's just, it was rough. Because now you don't have a safety net. At least when I had my PTSD, I had my brothers around me at all times. They kept me strong. And going through it, and you don't, no one knows what you're going through. You're just struggling. I feel like a lot of the challenges of people who have PTSD and, and anxiety experience things that they, they could be, in any kind of moment, f feel freaking out in their head. And they have to try to keep their cool because they don't want other people to think they're like crazy, you know? That's the hard thing is that 
You, but it's it, when you find people that have the same things as you, it makes you more comfortable. It keeps you keeps you uplifted. That hey, I'm not the only one going through this. When I'm drawing in my mind, it's like a it's like a meditation. I'm just thinking about drawing, or as I'm drawing, I'm thinking about the problems I have, but I'm thinking of it more of in a step. Everything's in a step, and figuring out what the end result is. Then instead, with my anxiety, it's like. I have 50 million problems and they all are going at once. I enjoy drawing the most flowers and um, like scenery, like beach scenery and stuff like that because it's like more peaceful things. Tattooing was a safety net for me. It helped me as much as I would move shops because I was so stressed out with the PTSD and because I had such a gypsy type job kind of saved my life because if I had this anxiety and I had a normal job, I don't think I could hold the job. Now that drawing is a part of my life and my career, I didn't really think it was going to be this important. I didn't think it was going to have to be something that I like had to be good at. I mean, I always wanted to be something in art, but when I got to the Marines, it kind of just, it phased that part of my life out. I didn't know what I could do. I thought I'd be a cop after the Marines, but that didn't turn out. So when I have, um, for when I'm going through panic attacks or PTSD moments, having my dog near me will comfort me. Calling my father and then having him talk to me about happier things will, will focus my brain to the, the better side of things. Because when you're in an anxiety moment, you stop breathing, which I was taught in therapy, you get to close your eyes and take three deep breaths. It'll focus you and to drink water and, um, Another thing that helps me is like visualizing in my head like the ocean and peacefulness, try to calm down the storm that's going on in my mind, and that helps a lot. It's very important to find an outlet with mental health. You have to find out anything, any kind of interest. If you don't have interest, like when I tattoo these young guys and I see that they're going through depression and anxiety, and then I ask them, what do, you, what do you like to do? They say play video games. Video games is the worst thing you can do because you're you're actually like, for me, playing like a combat game, it puts me back in combat. So I'm automatically adding to my anxiety. I'm increasing all that stuff. You need something that's more peaceful and more calming and relaxing. Uh, a lot of veterans are afraid to, to get help. I would suggest that they do. But I mean, drawing and painting, painting can definitely help you relax. I mean, if you, I would still say therapy and medication is the best way, but painting can help. It's taken me about 12 years, maybe even more, I think maybe 14 years to get help. Uh, my roommate suffers from it too and I can see it every day where he gets, every once in a while he'll just get drunk, blasted and do horrible things and wake up and you know, I know he's depressed. I wish he could get help too, but we were taught back in the day just to suck it up. No one cares. Everyone's going through it. Well, you know what, there's, there's, maybe everyone's going through it, but they need to get help too. I would suggest if you are going through PTSD and you just got out, or you're going through it now, text the VA hotline. Because I know for me, texting the VA hotline, I mean, calling it was too scary, it made it too real. But texting it made it feel less real, less, I'm talking to somebody, it made me feel better. Uh, my plans going forward are to hopefully start a painting YouTube channel where I can help veterans learn how to paint. I had one friend watch me paint and he was like, hey, I really want to try to do something to like relax me because nothing's working. And I was like, okay, I'll show you, you know, we can FaceTime. So I'd like to do YouTube to try to help people. I think moving forward that would help people feel better. Maybe I can get some of these veterans because we lose 22 a day to suicide. And I lost a lot of friends when I got out, more than I did in combat. It's a struggle, it's hard. They, they don't want to go to other people. They don't want help. They don't even know that their friends are going through it. To be honest, I had a lot of friends call me because maybe I'm the more understanding person. I don't I don't know, maybe my first time, but they'd call me and be like, hey man, I'm going through this. And I'm like, hey man, I, so am I. So is so-and-so who's called me. You know, get help, man. I don't want you to, to die like so-and-so. Like, 